Hi, this video supplements episode one. We demonstrate how to use Arena to build the first simulation model shown in part one, episode one. You can download a free student version of Arena from this website. The first model studies the banking counter system in a typical community bank branch. The counter is staffed with three cashiers. Customers would arrive randomly and independently. They will form a single waiting line and proceed from there to the first available cashier. Let's now switch to the Arena software. This is the screen you will see when you first launch Arena. Click OK. Go to basic process group of building blocks. The upper portion shown the so-called flowchart modules, the lower the so-called data sheets. We use flowchart modules to construct the simulation model and use data sheets to flesh out the contents of the modules, the flowchart modules. All simulation models starts with creating entities. In our case, of course, this would be the arrival of customers. The entity would then enter the system. In our case, the customer would enter the uh, counter process. Then, the entities could either continue to other parts of the system or simply leave. In our case, the customers would simply exit after done with the uh, banking transactions. So let's now flash out the contents. We first define the entity. We go to datasheet entity. Let's name the entity type simply customer. We also choose a appropriate picture to animate the entity. How about we choose a picture, picture person, gender neutral. Secondly, we define the resource that the process uses in our case, double click. In our case, we have only one resource that is cashier. So we, we call the resource cashier, how many? Three. Fixed capacity. Now we can flesh out the, the rest of the contents. First, let's call the entity creation process customer arrives. Then we choose from the portal menu the entity type name that we have already defined, customer. Next, we define the arrival, um, the render nature of the arrival process. The default is expo, meaning that the inter-arrival time from one arrival to the next is exponentially distributed. This is a very robust and appropriate distribution for many systems, including this one. There are other possible choices, but in our case, Expo is it. We then need to define the mean of this Expo distribution. We say 2.5 watt minutes. The rest of the default values are appropriate. So we simply click OK, done with the entity creation module. The process module, let's call it checkout. You can use any other appropriate name, of course. For a process, Arena allows for four possible logic. The one that is appropriate for us here is a cease delay release. It means that the customer comes in to seize a resource, in our case, cashier, 
for a duration of time for the cashier to perform the service. When done, then release the cashier so the cashier can uh, work for the next customer. Now, this is our understanding. We put that in writing. So we define the resource to use. We choose from the product menu cashier. Since we defined the resource in the resource data sheet, so Arena builds the product menu for us. We can simply pick the right one and, uh, and use it. Each time a customer would use just, would seize just one customer. So the default value one is appropriate. We don't change it. We click OK. Next, we need to define the processing time, the delay time. Arena here gives us a default random function to use. Triangular, there are other possibilities, including our custom defined uh, random functions. But triangular is very appropriate for us. It's a uh, robust choice for many real situations, including this one. It is empirically based, so we need to provide our estimate for the minimum processing time required, the mean average processing time required, and the maximum processing time required, time unit minutes. Finally, Arena gives us the default value, uh, uh, um, value added to, um, um, to define the processing time. Yes. This processing time is the uh, banking transaction time that we come to the bank for, so it is value added. It is not wait time, not transfer time. It has value for our purpose to come here. So it's value added. Done. Finally, we give the exit module a name. How about we simply say customer Exits. Okay, now we defined the model. Next, we we need to define how we want how we want to run the model. First, how many times we want to run the model? We say just the one, just the one replication. Second, for how long? We say one thousand what minutes? We want to run the simulation model for one thousand minutes. We choose this time unit, so let's synchronize the time units throughout the model to make the um, interpretation easier. So we click OK, we accept all other default values. Now we can run the model. We can run the model slowly, a little faster, or all the way fast forward to the end. At the end, Arena would provide us with a number of standard reports. These performa reports gives us statistics about entity. Total 367 entities have gone through the simulation, have been created, gone through the uh, banking process. Uh, about the waiting time, the waiting line, uh, the uh, cashiers, etc. Now, feel free to use them. But my friends, I want to emphasize in simulation model, when we try to interpret the results, very important is that we need to know the dynamic behavior of the system that is time series. So we add first time series, the average customer wait time. Entity wait time is a quintessential performance measure for almost any model. How to find the, the right expression to use? We use expression builder. My friends, make expression builder your best friend when you uh, uh, create simulation models. Now, there are many groups since we used flowchart modules uh, belonging to basic process, so we go to basic process. 
average customer wait time, customer is entity, so we click entity, wait time is time, click time. Bingo, from here we see average wait time. We click it and then we choose the entity, the red entity type from the pull down menu. Of course, there's only one entity type, so it's a no brainer here. We simply say, okay, this is the definition for the first time series. Let's add a second one. Let's call that average customer processing time. The expression for it, expression builder, entity, time, average value added time. Remember, we designated the processing time at the checkout to be value added. So we click average VA time and we and uh, make sure it is for the entity type customer. We click OK. Let's define one more time series. Average customer total time. Total time is also called cycle time. Expression builder, entity, time, C, average, total time. We make sure customer entity type is shown, even though it is a simple here, but, the, but this detail is a good habit to form. Now we click OK, so we have a three time series defined. Next, we define for how long we want to show the time series. So it is the time exit or the X exit. The length of, this, um, of the time series is shown in scale. The maximum 1,000 uh, time units. Every 100 time units, we make a mark. The reason we don't need to designate a minutes is because in setup, we have already uh, indicate that the baseline, the base time units is minutes. So minutes is automatically interpreted here. We click OK. So now we have the first visual build. See, three time series. Let's see what they would look like. Bingo, we got a this, um, display of the system's dynamic behavior, the system's behavior over time. Now, we, um, we noted the average wait time has stabilized pretty early on, but the average processing time and average total time have not stabilized. So we know up to uh, 1,000 minutes the systems, the simulation has not reached steady state yet. Okay, we next build a second visual, the histogram. It shows the percentage distribution of the length of waiting line, uh, such as what's the percentage of time the waiting line is empty, Q, zero people waiting. What's the percentage of time? There's one people waiting, so on and so forth. The quantity to obtain, the expression to obtain, this time is concerned with Q, the waiting line. Click Q, click current number in Q. This is the number in Q at any point of time. Click it, and then we make sure it is for the right queue. Um, each process that seeds a resource, Arena would automatically build a waiting line to associate with it. The waiting line's name would be the process uh, name dot queue. So this is the right queue for us. We click OK. This is the quantity we want to know. The minimum number, the minimum value of the number in Q is zero. The maximum 
is 10, and uh, we accept the default 10 sales. Let's use a title. How about we call it probability distribution numbers in Q. We click OK. So we got the second video. Let's run the model again. You see, the second visual shows that about 45% of time, there's nobody waiting in the queue. The queue is empty. About 10% of time, there's one people waiting, so on and so forth. This is nine plus people waiting. So we have done with the first simulation model, but when it comes to study, we are greedy. Therefore, let's see how we can uh, custom build more information to help us to help us analyze the um, custom statistic that we want to build here as an example is to find out how many customers who have done with banking but who had never waited so a customer would simply come in without waiting direct uh, no uh, uh, nobody waiting directly go to a cashier and uh, and uh, have the transactions done so to do that we need to use a couple of more modules flow chart modules the first one is to separate is to separate the customers who have not waited from those who have so we use decide we give it a name we say did not Wait, we define the decision rule for the not wait. The decision rule is two way by condition. Two way because it's true and false. By condition, we need to build a condition. We build that by ourselves. We first call out expression builder this time we want to find the expression that shows the waiting time for each individual customer. So we don't use the entity blown into base process. That entity shows the uh, statistics for all entities, for the group of entities. Here, we want to find the statistic for individual entity. So we go to entity related variables go to attribute go to time there we see entity total wait time each entity's total wait time that's what we want we want this time the condition is this time to be less than or equal to zero this is the condition we built the condition so we say when a incoming customer entering this decide module satisfies the condition would would come out from here not would come out from here but where to let's go to this icon click this icon we manually show tells arena where the false uh, route would go so a customer failed this condition this check would simply go directly to exit. For those who passed, we will record them. Record, what to record? As a first, give it a name. Record number not weighted. How to record? We choose a method from this I'll put a menu, the default is count. That is the right method to use. We count each time one customer passed the, the, the condition, passed the test, we add the counter by one. We give the, count, the counter an appropriate name, counter number not weighted. We click. Okay, we click okay. 
but then we need to, we want to visualize the uh, the content of the counter. We want to know exactly how many customers, not just to count them. We want to see here right away. So let's use a third type of visual uh, variable. We expression builder. This time we go to record basic process variable. Record. We go to count counter. Go to value. Ah, we choose the right counter to uh, use here. This is the right one. We say okay. Now the format, because the number is an integer, we choose a single star. Shows the integer. We use a title. Uh, the num number customers not weighted. We click OK. Here we got one visual, one variable. How about we also show the total number of customers uh, uh, gone through entity number out for customers. OK. Format five integer uh, title number customers served. OK, we got a second variable. Let's run the system. So you see, it shows that at um, up at simulation time, one thousand minutes, we have three hundred and sixty-seven customers done through the system. Of them, one hundred and nineteen customers have never waited. They simply go through straight to service. They don't have to wait. So now we have shown you the whole process for creating and running the first simulation model. On this note, my friends, thank you for watching, and uh, I will bid you so long.